Hello, everyone. Welcome to English with Teacher Aziz channel. How are you doing? I hope you are fine. Before starting our new lesson, please click on the subscribe button to get informed with new videos. The way we teach English has changed dramatically over the years. As our understanding of language learning grows, so too do our methods. From the structured grammar lessons of the past to the communicative approaches of today, English language teaching has been on a constant journey of evolution. There's three significant milestones in this journey. The grammar translation method, the direct method, and the audio-lingual method. Each approach reflects a distinct philosophy of language learning and has left its mark on the field. By understanding these historical methods, we gain valuable insights into the principles and practices that continue to shape English language teaching today. Examining their strengths and weaknesses allows us to appreciate the complexities of language acquisition and the ongoing search for more effective teaching strategies. The grammar translation method, dominant in the 19th century, approached language learning as a rigorous intellectual exercise. Rooted in the classical study of Latin and Greek, it emphasized grammatical rules and accurate translation. Students parsed sentences, memorized vocabulary lists, and translated texts from the target language into their native tongue and vice versa. The primary focus was on reading and writing with little attention paid to speaking or listening skills. This method viewed language learning as a means to develop mental discipline and gain access to the literature and culture of the target language. It assumed that by understanding the rules and structures of a language, students would naturally develop in the ability to use it. While this approach had its merits, its limitations soon became apparent. The grammar translation method, despite its drawbacks, offered certain benefits. Its emphasis on grammar provided students with a structured framework for understanding the mechanics of the language. Memorizing vocabulary lists, though tedious, helped build a foundational lexicon. Moreover, the focus on written language developed reading comprehension skills and exposed students to literary works. However, the method's weaknesses were significant the lack of emphasis on oral communication left students ill-equipped to engage in real-life conversations. The artificiality of translating sentences in isolation did little to foster fluency or natural language use. Furthermore, the method often proved demotivating as students struggled to connect their grammatical knowledge with practical communication skills. In the late 19th century, a reaction against the grammar translation method emerged in the form of the direct method. This new approach sought to replicate the way children acquire their first language, emphasizing immersion in oral communication. Teachers used the target language exclusively in the classroom, relying on gestures, visuals, and real-life situations to convey meaning. Grammar was taught inductively with students discovering rules through exposure to authentic language use. The direct method prioritized speaking and listening skills, aiming to develop fluency and natural pronunciation. This shift in focus reflected a growing understanding of the importance of oral communication in language learning. Direct method in action classroom practices and outcomes. Classroom activities in the direct method centered around engaging students in meaningful conversations. Teachers used question and answer sessions, role plays, and discussions to encourage active language production. Visual aids, real objects, and actions played a crucial role in conveying meaning, while grammar was introduced implicitly through context. The direct method brought a refreshing change to language teaching, fostering a more interactive 
and communicative learning environment. Students developed better pronunciation and fluency compared to their grammar translation counterparts. However, challenges remained in terms of effectively teaching grammar implicitly and addressing the needs of learners with diverse learning styles. The rise of audiolingualism, language learning through repetition. The mid 20th century saw the emergence of the audiolingual method. Driven by advances in technology and influenced by behaviorist psychology, this method viewed language learning as a process of habit formation through repetition and reinforcement. Drills, dialogues, and audio recordings became central to instruction. Students listened to and repeated model dialogues, practiced grammatical patterns through oral exercises, and received immediate feedback on their pronunciation and accuracy. The audiolingual method aimed to develop native-like pronunciation and fluency through intensive practice and the avoidance of errors. Techniques and theoretical underpinnings of the audiolingual method. The audiolingual method relied heavily on techniques like mimicry, memorization, and pattern drills. Students practiced grammatical structures through repetitive exercises, often with minimal explanation. Positive reinforcement, such as praise or points, motivated learners and solidified correct responses. This approach was grounded in behaviorist theory, which posited that language learning, like any other behavior, could be conditioned through stimulus response associations. However, this view overlooked the cognitive processes involved in language acquisition and the importance of meaningful communication. Lasting impacts of early methods, shaping modern approaches. While the grammar translation, direct and audiolingual methods have largely been superseded by more communicative approaches, their legacy endures. Each method contributed valuable insights that continue to inform language teaching today. The importance of grammar instruction, though not in isolation, remains relevant. The direct method's emphasis on oral communication and authentic language use paved the way for communicative approach or, or, or next make some approaches. The audiolingual method, despite its limitations, highlighted the role of repetition and practice in developing fluency. Modern methods draw upon these insights, integrating them into more balanced and learner-centered approaches. Conclusion. in a legacy of innovation in English language teaching. The journey through the history of English language teaching reveals a constant evolution of methods and approaches, from the grammar-focused instruction of the past to the communicative and learner-centered approaches of today. Each era has contributed to our understanding of how languages are learned and taught. As we move forward, it is essential to continue questioning, innovating, and adapting our methods to meet the evolving needs of learners. By learning from the past and embracing new discoveries, we can continue to shape the future of English language teaching and empower learners to achieve their communicative goals. Thank you for your attention. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. You can share my videos too. See you with another video.